Hi, I'm Dr. Masha Livitz. Hi, I'm James Wu. Uh, we're both endocrine surgeons at the UCLA Endocrine Center, and today we're here to talk to you about molecular testing of thyroid nodules. So thyroid nodules themselves are extremely common in the population. If I took 10 people off the street and did a neck ultrasound, uh, almost half of them would have a thyroid nodule. But when we find a thyroid nodule, it is our job to figure out whether that is a benign thyroid nodule, which most of them are, or if there's a possibility that it may contain cancer. So the first step when you find out you have a thyroid nodule uh, is to do a neck ultrasound. And the neck ultrasound will tell you a lot about that nodule, its size, what's inside of it, what the borders look like. And based on that alone, we can assign it a score that tells us how suspicious are we that it may contain a cancer. If the suspicion is very low, then all we need is to have you come back in a little bit of time and repeat that ultrasound to make sure that nodule isn't changing over time. For ones that are a little bit more suspicious, we may recommend that you get a fine needle aspiration biopsy, known as an FNA. And we have another video about FNA biopsies if you want to know more about that. Once we do the biopsy, the biopsy gives us a few cells from the thyroid nodule that a pathologist, a special doctor that looks at cells under the microscope, can assign that a score of how likely it is to be a cancer. And that system is called the Bethesda system. Bethesda 2 is a benign result, and Bethesda 5 or 6 is a result that is likely cancerous. However, up to one-third of nodules fall into this gray area, Bethesda 3 or 4. And these are what we refer to as indeterminate thyroid nodules because we are not sure if they are benign or they are cancerous. And in the past, we used to say, well, let's take everyone to surgery because we don't want to miss a cancer. But the risk of cancer in these indeterminate nodules is roughly 20%. That means if we operated on five people, one of those five people would have a cancer, but four of those five people would find out after surgery that they had a surgery for a benign thyroid nodule. So this can be a very frustrating result. If you have a thyroid nodule, you undergo a biopsy, you expect to get a definitive result. Is it benign or is it cancerous? And in most other organs, that is the case. If you have a colonoscopy, you have a colon polyp, you undergo the biopsy and it'll be you know, benign or malignant and then you know what to do accordingly. But as Dr. Wu mentioned, sometimes when we do the biopsy of the thyroid nodule, it just comes back uncertain. We're really not sure if it's benign or cancerous. That happens in up to one third of cases that Dr. Wu mentioned, and the risk of cancer is about 20%. So to try to avoid operating on everybody with an uncertain biopsy result, we now have molecular testing. Molecular testing is done on the thyroid nodule, um, and it's the same process as getting a thyroid biopsy or FNA. So it's a little needle that goes into the thyroid, collects a little bit of material, and we send it off to get the molecular test result. Now, this is only important for patients who have an uncertain biopsy result in the first place. If you have a benign biopsy result, you don't need any molecular testing. We already know it's a benign result. And then similarly, if it's a malignant, you know, or we know that it's thyroid cancer based on the biopsy result, we also don't need any molecular testing to tell us if it's benign or cancerous, we already know. But for that group of patients with an uncertain biopsy, that's where molecular testing is really helpful. There are a few different molecular tests that are available and generally improved by insurance. The two that we think are the most well-studied and most accurate are the ones that we have available at UCLA, and they are called Affirma GSC, or Gene Sequencing Classifier, and then ThyroSeq V3. The Affirma test relies on RNA, and the ThyroSeq test relies on DNA and RNA. And we have studied the results um, in our patients as well at UCLA. And we found that both of these molecular tests really work pretty well in our patients. So if you have an uncertain biopsy result, and then you undergo molecular testing on the nodule, 
and then the molecular test is negative. There are no high-risk mutations identified, it's a benign result. Well, now the risk of cancer goes down to about four or five percent. So for most of those patients, then you can avoid any surgery, and we would just watch you with a yearly ultrasound to make sure that the nodule is not growing. So that's probably the most important uh, results that could come out of that molecular test is if it's benign and you can avoid a surgery. If the molecular test comes back suspicious, then the risk of cancer is about 50% usually. So it doesn't tell you that you for sure have cancer, but, you t but it tells you that it's much more likely. And in those cases, we usually do recommend that you undergo a diagnostic lobectomy, which means that we remove the half of the thyroid that, con that contains that nodule to really get a definitive diagnosis if it was benign or cancer. Thank you so much for watching. If you have more questions about thyroid nodules, workup, or molecular testing, we would encourage you to visit our website, which is listed below. On our website is our phone number if you'd like to call us to schedule an appointment, and also many other patient videos we've made that answer questions about thyroid disease. I'm James Wu. I'm Masha Levitz. Thank you so much for watching.